All right. So uh, thanks to the organizer that I'm, I'm glad to be here and talk about the matching queue system. So here, like, uh, I'm going to talk about a multi-component matching queue system with abandonment. Uh, and it is basically uh, work, uh, like the, my advisor's work about double ND queue that inspires me that thinking about what's going to happen if we have multiple sides. So I'm going to explain that more carefully uh, and soon. So, um, okay, so first, uh, we for the model, we consider a product made of like K different type of, or K different like category of components. And we say that uh, they all arrive in a assembly, assemble to order production uh, like process. So for each a component, they arrive like randomly over time and uh, they wait in their uh, respective queues. And whenever their patience expires, they may have to like leave the system. And if their patience like uh, doesn't run out, they may eventually get served for general like you. But now we say they eventually get matched. So uh, something that we have to be careful is that the a matching behavior is instantaneous. So whenever it is possible to form a match, they immediately uh, do that and leave the system right after that. So there's a couple of things I want to say is that a matching is according to a first come first match policy. And at a given time, at least one component queue is empty. So I'll explain that real quick. And for sure that components in our case is perishable means that if they're not patient enough, quote, and they may leave the system. So there's a, a couple of things I want to mention before I show you guys the graph of what's going to happen to this model. So for example, if, like I said, we have like K, K different components, right? So what if K equal to two? That's more like a two-sided like matching queue system. So this type of model has been well studied recently. Uh, it's more like in a, in a blood, uh, blood bank drive or organ transplantation problem. We have a demand side and supply side. Whenever a supply is matched with the demand, they, they leave the system. Like for example, in an organ transplantation, and they we don't really care what's gonna happen once there is a match. If they have they need to do a surgery or something, that that's not the process we care about now. So, for the two sided queue, it has been a uh, a well study recently, like uh, in a paper by Liu and my advisor Nana in 2021, and they solved like a two sided queue uh, type of thing. So here's a graph that I want to show you guys. For example, we have like K size right in here. For for example, we have K different categories of components and they line up in their respective queues. But at this time, like the queue J is empty. And here the lambda I up to lambda K represents the arrival rate. So when there's a new arrival, a red dot comes, there's a match and the, the matching this, all those behaviors is instantaneous. So they, they just get together and leave the system. So whenever there's a new arrival to this uh, queue J here. So after there's a new match, like what happened to this Jth queue, we can see that the Kth queue becomes empty. And so now in this case, like we have two queues that are empty. So, and they, sort of all the those are blue dots and orange dots and this black dots all they all have to wait for those new arrivals from this j's queue and k's queue so if there's a new arrival to j's queue but no new arrival to k's queue there's no match at all because to form a match we need exactly each individual of that right from different categories so i uh, I didn't really draw any graph about the abandonment thing because uh, since like, for example, this uh, blue dot, uh, the third one is not patient enough, they may abandon before they get matched. So some uh, normal notations. And so for the model we have in here is that uh, we construct, uh, we consider the state process as the queue length processes. And in here, the queue, uh, T equal to Q zero, which means the initial state where the initial components in the queue and plus AT represents the, uh, the number of arrival by time T subtract the GT means the uh, number of abandoned components by time T and subtract RT. So RT is a thing that 
sort of different from what I've seen uh, in the literature. Because here the RT represents the cumulative number of a com a completed matches by time t. So the way to define this uh, term is slightly like different. So we can see that the RT as said is defined to be the minimum of exactly each individual of those uh, arrival process of check this abandonment process. But this is uh, more complicated than it looks because uh, there's a couple of things I wanna mention is that uh, the first, because of this RT process times I, which is the all one, ve all one vector, and we can see there, we can somehow do some kind of substitutions, right? So for example, if this K equal to two, like a two-sided Q, and this Q1 equal to the same thing with RT involved, and Q2 equal to the same thing with RT involved, and the same RT, we can do a substitution. That's why they generate a two-sided queuing system. But now that we cannot really do that thing because we have multiple like sides right there, that means that each Q lengths are sort of like coupled with each other. And the second thing I want to mention is that this RT here is subtract GI here. So sort of like we can say that GIT represents the, uh, the number of abandoned components by time T, but we have to be careful here. So the number of abandoned components by time T may not contain those components who are going to abandon or who will eventually abandon right, if they arrive before time t. So at time t, at a given time t, there may be someone that waiting in the queue, but they will eventually abandon due to their patient's time. So, but it's not counted here. And those portion will not really contribute to a match, to a match, to any match, right? So, but somehow one can uh, prove an equivalent uh, way to define this RT, which is given this way, is do not harm to directly subtract GI instead of something more complicated. So here uh, we would like to consider a sequence of uh, this matching queue systems. I see there's nothing changed except uh, there's a superscript N and the N is related to the uh, arrival process. So we consider uh, this is a pretty much the same thing and uh, I'm gonna explain more, uh, more assumptions soon. So I briefly scale those uh, quantities, we can see that the Q length is scaled by square root N and the A hat and I is, scaled, is centered and scaled. This is more like the process level of center, uh, central limit theorem, right? And the crucial part is it's R hat NT uh, is subtract by lambda times NT divided by square root N. So now the diffusion scaled Q length process can be represented in equation seven and what we would like to see is some assumptions about this model here. So for the initial condition, we assume, uh, we assume that it is, this is more like a deterministic condition, uh, the, the scaled uh, initial data convergence to xi. And since like for, for different i's from one to k, and we can also say it's joint convergence for sure. And the heavy traffic condition is more like here, the lambda ni represents the arrival rate. And in this case, we assume that it is follows, the model follows personal arrival and with parameter lambda i, uh, lambda ni. So this sounds like uh, the average arrival rate of each component i, i from one to k, they're all pretty much the same. And the heavy traffic condition says that the lambda ni is roughly uh, the, average, the average arrival speed is, is roughly the same as lambda naught times n with a small deviation of order the square root n. So as soon as the arrival process, like I said, is Poisson arrival with parameter lambda n i, which is more like a special case, right? And some conditions we have is a weak convergence. We can prove that uh, the, the diffusion scale converges weakly to a uh, Brownian motion. And the patient's timing here, we say that the patient's time, uh, yeah, the, the patient's time D and I K, which is for the case component in the category I is exponential distributed with parameter delta and I, and same uh, is convergence result. And for the abandonment process, we can define the GNIT as a unary person process uh, with uh, delta and I, which means uh, 
this is more like the overall abandonment rate because uh, delta n i is more like a single. Uh, yeah, the patient time. The rate. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so here we introduce a, a new process and had an i. This is more like remember this is uh, the equation a represents the abandonment process and. The, the M hat and I represents this more like a centering and scaling. And we can prove that this is a natural filtration. I'm oh, sorry, uh, this is M hat and I, it's a Brownian motion with respect to natural filtration I defined uh, in previous couple of slides. And here uh, with uh, subtraction and addition, we can see that the Q length process can be represented as in equation 10, as same as uh, the R hat N process as in equation 11. So everything is basically the same, except I constructed a Martin U representation here. And here, uh, there's a theorem that I wanna say that it helps us to prove the weak convergence of this uh, this whole like Q length process, because we are sort of interested in the behavior of the I'm whole model. You have about two minutes. Yeah, I hope they should be able to finish that. So the continuity of inco representation is basically proved uh, using the fixed point theorem. And this is pretty similar with Pong, Taraja, and Whip's paper, uh, their results. But with a slight difference is that we have a like pretty strange long nonlinear term ZT here. So for our weak convergence result, which is that we can we prove that the joint Q length process converges weakly to X, and this X satisfies the stochastic integral equation. But it is slightly different from the normal stochastic integral equation. And we have a graph shows that what exactly it is. But the way to prove this is uh, as kind of uh, following the continuity of integral representation I mentioned uh, in the previous slides. So this is what happened uh, more like a simulation. But this is what happens like whenever the Q uh, is zero, which means at this time the blue Q is empty and at this interval the red Q is empty so this is more like a, a, a roughly simulate this whole uh, like process but we don't exactly sure what exactly those processes are so uh, yeah and um, it's kind of interesting if one can formulate the control uh, over the capacity of each Q and somehow we can sort of formulate uh, optimal control problem maybe, but that's something that I'm currently working on. So yeah, I guess I'll stop right here. <laughs>